In this quick start tutorial, we're going to go over the baking process in 3D Coats Retopology Workspace. This is where we would bake all the high resolution details from our high poly sculpt down to our low poly version that resides here in the Retopo workspace. Once we go through the process, 3D Coat is going to take a copy of this low polygon Retopo mesh and send it to the paint workspace where we will have all the associated image maps that were baked, such as the color, glossiness, metalness, normal or displacement depth and 3D Coat will place all those image maps in the appropriate layers. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. I have the high poly scoped underneath the Retopo object. I have it snapped and I have all my UVs set up and ready to go. You can cycle through your different UV maps here. All right, so let's say I wanted this to be a game mesh. I typically would use the per pixel painting method, but you could choose PTEX or micro vertex. But for most game models, you would choose this option bake with normal map using per pixel painting. If I have multiple objects and if any of them happen to intersect or touch one another so that it would cause baking problems, then we can utilize a tool called name correspondence. It's actually sequential texture baking. And what I mean by that is other tools that you may find either in plugin form or native to a 3D application, they might allow you to explode the bake, meaning it will move all the individual parts out in space so that you can bake everything in one pass. In 3D Coat, it's handled somewhat differently, but the objective is the same. The way 3D Coat does it is it uses a naming correspondence between the high poly sculpt and the low poly retopo mesh. The Vox Tree layer panel you see here is just a copy of what's in the scope workspace. This is the hierarchy panel that we see there. This just allows you to access it without having to step into that particular room. You can see a naming correspondence. I named these exactly the same. Another thing to keep in mind is if you have secondary elements that you want to be baked with another mesh as if they are all one, then what you would do is in the Vox Tree layer panel in the scope workspace, you would make those child layers. And you can do that by going to the right hand side of the layer and just dragging it to where it's a child layer, or you can right click and change the parent this way. So these individual logos that were created as sculpt meshes, I don't actually want to be represented as low polygon meshes. I want them to be baked as if they're one here on this jersey. So again, they are child layers and they will be treated as if they're merged with the parent. And I have a similar situation here with the pants as well. All right, so we're just going to bake this one object for the moment, and then we'll come back and look at the sequential texture baking. So I'm going to uncheck the name correspondence for baking because we don't need that feature yet. And we'll choose bake with normal map. The next dialog that you'll see allows you to interactively adjust the inner baking cage using the sliders here. And we even have the ability to ghost so we can see through the voxel object and adjust our baking cage visually. Let's set that back to one. And I may even increase that. Okay. Let's just make that two. And the outer baking cage, you can check that. I'll leave it at three. And I can turn ghosting off. You have two different snapping methods that you can choose from. I'll stick with outer surface for the moment. These options allow you to basically make localized adjustments. Previously, you had to use these spherical zones and they were quite effective, but it had its own limitations. Being able to make these adjustments by using the brush is much more effective and much more efficient. This one, if you're using the inner baking cage, it's going to push it in. And this one will push it or pull it out. But conversely, if you're using the outer shell, basically reverses the action here. So for example, on the outer shell, and I click this one, you can see it's going to pull it away. And that's not what I want. So I'm going to undo. Actually, let me go ahead and do that. And I want to show this option allows you to return it back to the original state here. So we'll click that. And you just keep brushing and it will set it back to this scan depth. Okay, this one will relax. And again, these two are just push and pull. So if you are working on the inner shell, it's just the opposite. Let's turn ghosting on. If I want it to pull outward, that's the one I want to use. If I want to push it back in, that's the one to use. 
Now I'll just go ahead and hit OK. I don't want to make occlusion at this point. The last dialog here allows me to select the texture size for the UV map. And I can choose the normal map method here. And also if I want to subdivide, if I subdivide here, I still will be able to export this original low poly mesh. 3D Coat is going to store that internally and give you the option to use the low polygon version that you see here. But the subdivided version will be the mid poly version. So you can choose to use whichever version you want to export when you get the export dialog. So again, the, the mid poly version will be the subdivision level here. And the low poly version will be the original that's not subdivided. Okay, and if you want to auto map, you could choose that option here. Let's go ahead and OK. And now we can go to the paint workspace. I've already unchecked show voxels in paint room, but oftentimes you'll see both. So I'm going to uncheck that. And now we can see the baking result. I can see the normal maps here in the texture editor, the color, or the glossiness. All right, now I can go back to the Retapo workspace, hide the jersey, and proceed to work on the pants. I'm going to right click and choose show all hidden volumes, and then I just need to hide the jersey. So let's unhide all these other objects that we do want baked. Let's see, paint objects, I'm gonna hide that. So we are ready to bake. Let's go to the bake menu and check name correspondence for baking. I can check this little option here or just click on that and it's gonna do a search for correspondence. If you have a hidden object, that's gonna be listed here because it's not finding the object. Again, it's just because it's hidden. But we do have another one that does not have a corresponding name. So let me click OK. And here's the culprit, this one. Let me double click that. Make the change, and now I can check once more. Now the only thing it finds is the jersey, but that's okay. We've already done the baking for that. So we're ready to go back to normal map with per pixel painting. And we do have one slight problem here. Small objects like the belt and the strings or laces are going to be much different than the pants in terms of the baking scale. And we could go in and use our brush settings, but that's going to be a little bit more difficult than is necessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all of these smaller objects. And the belt. Okay, so let's just bake the pants. And I don't need name correspondence just yet. We'll leave our parameters the same. Hit OK. We'll keep the same settings here. Let's go to the paint workspace and I can see the result. Okay. So we have those two. Let's go to the Retapo workspace, hide the pants, and I can unhide everything else. Let's go to our bake scan settings and simply adjust our settings first before we begin the bake process because we may want to actually bake the belt and these other elements separately. So this is way too much. Small objects like this, it's probably best to go down to very small increments, let's say 0.5. So the inner shell looks about right. We can adjust that. We see very little poking through. So let's look at the outer shell. That may be a bit much, 0.7. We can save our settings and reload them later. We can go to the bake menu, name correspondence for baking, and then choose our same option here for per pixel painting. Okay. So what it's doing to prevent baking errors, again, it's just going through a sequence one at a time. 
even though you don't see the objects hiding and unhiding in the viewport, 3D Coat handles it internally. So here is our finished baking result. Now I find that some PBR shaders, if you use the normal map option for bump, that currently you may not get a proper normal map result. So on this ring here, I probably should have turned the normal mapping off. But otherwise, it came out just like we saw in the scope workspace. So let's unhide everything. I can hide the pants and inspect the jersey again, or the jersey, and just look at the pants. So everything baked properly. And that's a quick look at using the retypable baking features. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.